And I think we're live. I'm not 100% sure, but I do think so. So, how's it going, everyone? Just let me know again if the audio's good, if everything's good. If there's a loud fan, that's actually uh, my laptop. How is everybody? today well I guess should get started so today we are building a computer the computer is going to be based on the Asus Prime B450M-A motherboard and we're going to use a Ryzen 5 3400G. Bring this guy in here. So there she blows. And we've got a uh, XPG SX8100, SPG Gamix uh, D10 3200 megahertz. How's it going, everyone? So I've got some really bad news for you guys. Um, turns out my uh, my wife, under my recommendation, so my fault, brought with her the uh, USB cable for the Elgato. So this guy. So I was going to capture the Windows installation and everything, but I now I can't because she brought her cable to uh, where she's working in the field. So. I went to the dollar store, uh, I bought two USB uh, Type-C cables, can't find them now of course, this one and this one, and both of them are USB 2.0, so the Elgato does not work. So. You'll have to trust me. I, you know, I'll, I have a solution, but it's going to be ghetto. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so I have benchmarks on my USB stick as well to uh, when I install Windows. But uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, I do have a solution for that. It's going to be a shit one, but it's still going to be a solution. But as always, we're going to start with the motherboard. Uh, we will not use the SATA cable. So this build is not using a graphics card, only the processor. So here's the beauty here. There's the uh, parts list on screen if you're interested. And we're going to be using this a processor. So my plan is to build it all up on the bench and then test it to see if it works before installing it in the case. But then we're going to obviously install it in the case. AMD processor. So this little guy, this tiny little guy, that's your processor. So what's nice with the 3400G instead of the 2400G is it comes with a much bigger cooler this time. So this cooler is a beefy boy. Look at that. So we're going to install that. But um, as you can see, which way? It needs to go this way. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to spin the fan on here, huh? Because uh, so the bottom is this way, but you see these two screws here, and these two screws here. They go here and here, so it'd be sideways. So we're gonna have to rotate the fan on this. 
Yeah, I don't know. I didn't forget the, the GPU. No, 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 no. So if you've never built a computer before, I'll tell you, your best resource comes in the box with the motherboard, and that's the, um, the book that comes in the motherboard. If you have any uh, questions on how to build a PC, it's all in here. So you got your, your overview, you have, um, you'll have your, how to put your, your socket, your, your CPU in, and everything in here. You see here, see it tells you, there's your instructions. So it tells you, match the corner with the corner, you know, and, and all that good stuff. So really, if you haven't built your own computer, you need to. All right, so we're gonna lift this guy up. So we have a triangle, this corner here, lower corner. And this, our Ryzen CPU, you gotta be extremely careful, because look at all the pins on this, thing, this guy. If you drop this, you're gonna damage the pins, and you won't be able to have it work. And right there, that's the, that's the triangle, right there. See, has a gold triangle. It goes onto this triangle here. Yeah, you're you're right, uh, Ryan. The the AMD CPUs do use a ton of force on the lever. Actually, that one wasn't too bad at all. But typically, they do. All right, uh, this is the AM4 cooler mount, which we don't. Uh, AM3 cooler mount. I mean, whoops use the right screwdriver. We don't need that. We're going to use the uh, AM4 style mount, which which is the four screws here. So the old ones had a bar, pressure bar that went over this. So these are just Wii parts. We're just going to take these parts, put them in our right hand, throw them over our left shoulder. So these guys come out. I think those the, the backing plate stays on though. But yeah, building a computer is easy peasy. If you think it's difficult, um, try it. It's really not that bad. You just, just following instructions. Okay, so I have half a mind to replace the OEM uh, heatsink compound. So this gray stuff here the gray stuff on the thing because sometimes it gets uh, it gets stuck on the CPU itself but I didn't really buy any so I guess we're dealing with this this is a little bit of a sketchy part too screwing down the heatsink it needs more force than you think and those noises totally normal just the springs It's all right, junk. Uh, you know what? Pre-builds are a good like a like a gateway drug. They get you started. My first PC was a uh, pre-built. Actually, it was it was a uh, it was a clone. So it was built by a, like a computer shop, but it was it was still pre-built. I didn't build it. Man, the uh, heatsink is just really close to the capacitors here. One's on. Is this one even threaded? No, it's not even threaded. See, that's what I mean. It requires a lot of a lot of force to get past those springs. So that's on there. That's on there. There we go. Uh, I don't know if they'll run AOL. Uh, this being Canada, I don't think we had America online. All right, a little bit of uh, beautification step. I'm gonna take the fan and rotate it so it's facing upwards. Totally unnecessary because uh, this case doesn't even have a side window. 
This is uh, solidly for old people. My mom might be watching right now, but it's okay. She knows she knows she's old. She knows she spends all her time with uh, two different Facebook tabs open. There we go. So I'm just going to rotate this so the AMD faces uh, up and down like this. So this will actually be in the case this way. So that's the back, that's the bottom. So we want the AMD facing topwise. It's been a long time since I've built a computer. Probably been a year and a half or so. I don't know when I, I don't remember when I built my uh, current editing computer. I think it was a year and a half. So you know it's been a little bit. <laughs> yeah, gratuitous RGB. Uh, you will see, if you look at the parts list, there's a few parts in there that are sort of splurgy. And uh, if you guys have any questions about why I spent my parents' hard-earned retirement dollars on some splurgy parts, I will explain. Each, each and every one of those parts has a reason for being there. Um, the cost on the rig was 770 with taxes and shipping and everything for all the parts. That includes power supply, that includes the case, everything. 770 Kanuki stand Copex. The uh, so some parts are very expensive. Um, it's just we just happen to be in COVID world. So that's just the new normal. All right, so CPU fan, this pin header right here. It's unfortunate you can't really tuck this in, but uh, it is what it is. I'm not too concerned. Like Again, I'm the one who's gonna be working on this thing pretty much ever. All right, so that's good. I wonder if I can run it like, around. No, there's like no, sp it's no space. That's fine. We'll cable manage it some some other way. Okay, so that's in. We'll just you know we'll have to tuck that in somehow. Okay, uh, our Rami boys. So again, you follow the Emmanuel. So recommended if you got two. See, dim A two and dim B two. So that's the light gray ones. Usually it's the ones away from the CPU and in this case exactly the same. So we got our killer gaming RAM here. Uh, let's see. My Neuf. Yeah, so NVMe and SATA are very close to the same on everyday workloads and the reason is the reason I went NVMe is that um, it was $30 more expensive to go from SATA to NVMe. NVMe has faster loading times, it has better random IOs, uh, and the drive was on sale. So that's why. It was $30. So we splurged 30 bucks, you know, but we got much more out of it. So it's a, it was a higher price but better value. So um, these guys have a little notchy boy there and there's a little notch in there and um, usually you just have to open one side some of them yeah this one same so if you only have one side to open you basically slot it into the side that's not open slide it down into the open side and uh, don't be afraid because this takes a reasonable amount of force there we go to press down till it clips in we got 16 gigabytes here, uh, 3,200 megahertz. Yeah, NVMe is also very compact. You're completely right, and um, I do like that aspect as well. But this, in a closed case like this, doesn't really doesn't really matter. It was more for um, 
it was more for the the fact that you got you paid a little bit more but you got a lot more so I mean the computer the computer has six parts I think one two three four five six and we already have three installed right so this is this is going quickly That's good here is our XBG S8 S wow SX8100 NVMe SSD super fast drive it's a PCIe Gen 3 uh, yeah 3 by 4 and it goes in this slot here ooh it's got a heat sink look at that but yeah so this little chip here I mean it's even it's even narrow that's a whole terabyte so that slides in has a little key right there slides in like this kind of give it a little wedge and then you can push it down and then you put a screw on top here and that screw does not come with your NVMe drive the screw must come with your motherboard so here it is here so it's got a little standoff and a screw don't lose these they're quite expensive to replace unless you just buy them on eBay in advance So you screw the standoff in the correct location. So that's this location here. That doesn't have to be super tight. And then you have your tiny, tiny little NVMe screw. And you push down your drive. Put your NVMe screw on there. There we go and screw it down so that's the brilliance of NVMe that's your hard drive installed right there and by hard drive I mean solid state drive but you know what I mean um, the NVMe comes from uh, Newegg they were on sale full cost of this NVMe drive and I know I'm sorry it's expensive $181 and so there put this on top like this and they call this a heat sink but it's I mean it's not really it's a it's a plate won't do very much for your temperatures uh, in fact NVMe drives are interesting because they need to actually stay warm you can't you can't overcool an NVMe because the uh, NAND flash has an operating temperature. There we go. I guess it looks pretty, right? Yeah, see, see, that's what I mean, junk. Like, I, I got this. This was 181 taxes in. It was, uh, I think, 150, 150 bucks plus tax for uh, for NVMe, and I could have got a SATA one for like 120. 130 so 130 to 150 it's not not very different right so I decided why not so uh, that's it this is all we got we just need the uh, the power supply now and then we can go through the laborious task of putting it in the computer case but yeah there's there's nothing I mean there's really nothing to especially if it's a um, if it's like no graphics card there's like nothing to it here's the power supply so this is a gigabyte PW 400 I have Cinebench and everything on my USB that's why I'm really disappointed that I don't have a USB type C 3.0 cable I had everything set up. I had the Elgato, freshly stolen from my wife. Very similar, Patty. Nearly the same. So this guy here, this was a steal. Power supplies right now are um, ridiculously overpriced. But uh, I got this at Canada Computers for $40. And I think it was that cheap 
because uh, nobody wants a 400 watt power supply. But I think this whole system uh, at full load is probably going to run 110 watts. So I wouldn't worry about it. So we have our IEC cable. And I mean, Gigabyte's a decent company. I don't know if they make decent power supplies. They make decent motherboards. Okay, so that's that. Um, we got our power supply out. It is, uh, if you look up uh, Vega 11 versus, just, just Google Vega 11 versus uh, GT 1030, it is faster. Sorry to say. Is it Vega 11 in here? I think it's Vega 11. Um, let's see. Yes. Vega 11. So, yes. This is indeed faster than your GT 1030. It's actually a capable like if you're uh, if you're not a snob about graphics, you can play competitive gaming on just this APU. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy how far we've come. So this is a whole bunch of extra wiring that we're not going to need on this computer. Um, there's Actually, there's no accessories at all, now that I think about it. It's literally just um, this plugs in here, like that. And then we're going to have a case fan plug in, and that'll be it. All, all these cables are extra. Don't need, don't need any of these at all. All right, let me see if I can plug in my monitor here. So I apologize, but this is the ghetto setup I was talking about. We are going to literally put a monitor on the table like this. And this will be HDMI. I apologize for the level of jank. I came here prepared to be uh, to have some professionalism, but uh, turns out I was not prepared. All right. So actually, this one has uh, this board is pretty cool because uh, AMD is doing really well. Why? Why are you doing this? So it has uh, four. Stop it. It has four. USB uh, type, there we go, USB 3.0 type A, and it has a 3.1 Gen 2 type A. No type C on this though, that's unfortunate. Uh, the standoffs come with the case uh, junk. Most of the quality cases are pre-installed standoffs. Uh, this case is not quality, so no pre-installed standoffs. Okay, well I think we're ready to go. How's it going, Gadget Reboot? That was a that was a really good video you put out there. It was uh, it was impressive the amount of stuff that you covered in a single video. Um. Where'd my power cable go? Over here. I'm terribly sorry for the level of jank, ladies and gentlemen. But I guess that's what you've come to expect on this channel after all.
All right. So like this. Power supply is on. Little light on the um, graphics card lit up. We have an edge light over here as well. So we have a, a light down here. So that's good. Now we need to short the power pin, um, which is on the front panel connector. Uh, I don't see power. I just have to check which uh, front connections are which. BIOS. So again, manual referring to it. Um, TPM. Uh, this motherboard has RGB capabilities. I did not get any RGB parts. Uh, front panel, 9. Give me my front panel connections, goddammit. Oh, here we go. Um, calm, nope. Oh man, they don't even say. All right, well, I guess we're guessing. Hmm. I don't know, these guys? There we go. So the fans are spinning on the graphics, on the um, CPU, and oh, you know what I forgot? The 8 pin. Whoops. Let me just turn that off. Hmm. Off. So there was another thing I needed to plug in. Whoopsies. Okay, so there should be uh, two eight pins. Thanks, DJ. I'm just uh, I'm just kind of you know doing doing my whims basically. Um, my mom asked me to build her a computer, so here I am building her a computer. All right. Let's try this again. Power on. Okay, are we going to get a picture? The monitor just detected something. Yeah. We're booting. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we know it boots. That's good. Configure your system. No keyboard detected. 16 gigs of RAM. We're good. Gonna shut this down. All right. Well, I mean, if your mom asked you to build her a computer, I think you would too. I don't think there's anything specifically kind about that. Plus, I mean, joke's on her. That means I get to build a computer, right? Well, now comes the hardest part of the entire build, and that's the uh, case. Now, Building in budget cases is not fun. They don't make your life easy. We'll try our best. I had a look in the case uh, a little bit earlier and I still don't think it's going to be fun. But there was no point in blowing, you know, $150 in a nice MATX case.
So, we got this puppy. I know you can't see much yet. I'm just pulling off the uh, back side, side panel. There we go. And then pull off the front side side panel and that's where we're gonna be working. Because you pull the other side off too because you need to run wires often. There we go. Okay, so we got, uh, here's the standoffs. They're in here in this bag. Um, this is what we have to work with. Now, I already peaked, like I said before. So what you need to do is you need to install the standoffs where they match the holes for your specific motherboard. So I went around and I hit them with a little bit of uh, paint marker. See, dot, 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 dot. And that's where the standoffs have to go. Well, uh, 16 gigs of RAM. Well, first of all, she opens like a thousand tabs on Chrome, so she needs it. But mostly the, uh, the the 16 gigs of RAM is because it was only like, so it was a hundred dollars for 16 gigs and it was like $86 for eight gigs. So also you gotta be careful, these uh, APUs, they use um, system RAM as graphics RAM. So, you know, I don't think she's gonna be doing anything crazy, but the value proposition was too good to say no. And I mean, it's decent RAM, it was on sale, so got good quality RAM. It's got uh, CL16 timings, but some people were saying they were able to tighten up the timings to further than that. So what I plan on doing is leaving the system completely stock clocks, and then in a couple years, when my mom says, oh, it's starting to slow down, I'll just, you know, like reformat, get rid of the Facebook viruses and then um, overclock a little bit to give her a little bit more speed. Get the parts list out of your way there. Thanks Amos. I appreciate that. YouTube really, really needs you guys to do that in order to promote me. It kind of sucks. Um, but it is what it is. So I do appreciate when you guys take the time to uh, hit like. I'm not even sure, probably don't have that many viewers. There we go. My, uh, my drill battery video has been blowing up though. I guess that's bad wording when you're talking about a lithium ion battery. But uh, when you start getting a lot of views on a single video, all the crazies come out of the woodwork. I'm telling you, these people, they have no idea. They think that every single lithium ion battery in production is balance charged. It's just not. All right, there's a tool to tighten these down, but I've been working on cars long enough that usually give it the death grip with my fingers some uh, some cases actually come with that tool it just looks like a looks like a hex with the Phillips on one side this one did not come with that all right so now we're ready to put the motherboard in missed the death grip on that one So once your motherboard is pretty loaded up, um, it's, it gets kind of heavy. But here's the part where everybody forgets. So you've got to put the I.O. shield in. If you have um, dainty office worker hands, then this is going to suck for you because these things are uh, pretty sharp. They're untreated uh, metal. 
but yeah you have to jam it into the back hole here and it needs to line up pretty flush if it's not flush uh, it digs into your ports and also the low quality ones the um, the metal is not bent properly so then you're gonna actually it will dig into your ports whether or not you've done it right but yeah this is basically a grounding shield it's like the outside of all your ports is basically ground potential and this kind of links them together with the ground of the case so that's good in there okay I'm gonna take this out of the way this is for my mom chemical and welcome to the stream um, Vero will need a new computer soon but we're waiting for a deal on the uh, on the B550 boards which are not even out yet so we have to wait till they come out and then we have to try to get a uh, sale on them so that's going to be difficult so this is a little tricky you have to get them all lined up and again the IO shield if it's not in there properly or if it's just low quality you may have some issues getting it in there the important thing is to not scratch the bottom of your motherboard yeah it seems like the IO shield is all contorted so I'm gonna go with a uh, flat blade screwdriver and just gently nudge it into position if you don't know what you're doing here, just take the IO shield out. Uh, on a B550? Yeah. Um, I mean, good luck. We're, we're not expecting it to go on a reasonable sale anytime soon, but we're hoping. I'm hoping. We're always not big on hope, but I am. There we go. Just had to massage some of the uh, some of the tabs in the right place there, and then you just basically have to hold it up against the I/O shield and then put the screws in. I mean, again, this this is not rocket surgery. Just making sure everything is good. Yeah. Yeah, AMD's been changing the game. For a little while now. Did I miss? I missed a standoff. Dang it, Dale. Oh, just in the wrong spot. Needs to go one lower. Well then. The X570s are not going going to get much cheaper simply because the X570 chipset, the uh, the literal controller, like the the chip that actually uh, controls everything on the X570 platform, uh, it is I think it's American about a hundred dollars American for just the chip. So the motherboard has to be more expensive than a hundred dollars. Or else they they're they're selling at a at cost, right? And they might get slightly better deals from for buying at volume, but basically, your uh, X570 is not going to get much cheaper than they are now, and that's corroborated by uh, by bigger YouTubers like Linus. I I'm pretty sure. Plus, I honestly don't want an X570 board for the simple fact that it needs a tiny fan. The X570 chipset requires a fan, and any fan is a failure point. So that you can't just, well, you can replace them. They're going to be available for replacement parts, but they're going to cost like 40 bucks. 
So I'm not into that. I would much rather get a, a B450, which has all the features of the 550 aside from uh, uh, PCIe Gen 4. But honestly, I, I'm i not at a point in my life where I can even afford PCIe Gen 4 peripherals anyways, so it doesn't matter. I can't even afford things that can saturate the Gen 3. Yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a, my parents' machine. This is for, for seniors. This is not, uh, it's a seniors' machine, but honestly, like, they changed their PC so little that this is going to last them, man, until Ryzen doesn't get the next socket, they're going to have the socket after that by the time my parents are going to upgrade. So that's why I went with a um, Ryzen 5 instead of a Ryzen 3 because the Ryzen 3 is a great choice but this will maybe get them a couple more years before it becomes intolerable right now they have a third gen or second gen i3 well uh, junk you realize that fourth gen or I guess third gen Ryzen, so Ryzen 4000 is right around the corner and so there's going to be deals like you can go and, and haggle on first gen Ryzen stuff on eBay. Just saying. There's nothing wrong with first gen Ryzen. It was quick when it came out, it's still quick now. It's just not as quick, you know what I mean? Same, same, only different. just tightening down these motherboard screws now in my youth I used to leave uh, most of these out I used to just put one or two screw it you know it doesn't really make much difference anyway so this is for my parents though so you know really Robert are you serious this thing is faster than your Autodesk machine I think there's something wrong with your Autodesk machine so that's done. Um, the worst part of building a PC is the front panel connectors. And now I have to actually Google how they go because this thing doesn't come with a, uh, there's no silk screening that tells you what they do. You can see uh, HDD, LED, and reset. Think, I mean, they're standard, but still I'm gonna have to Google it because uh, I don't wanna do it twice. You know what I mean? So yeah. Gonna yeet these back into the case. Where do we go? I guess we can go this way. We'll go. Well, we'll go in the power supply hole. Why not? Down there. All right. So there's the. There's the front panel connectors. Connectors I hate. That's the ones we should do first. Okay. There's more to life than, than gigahertz, but it is a um, it is a four core eight thread CPU, which is which is awesome. Plus, it has a GPU built in and not a crappy one like the ones in the Intel CPUs. Just looking up the diagram here. So hard drive, LED, positive to the outside. So there's positive down here to the outside. They're standard, but I don't build enough to, uh, to remember this by heart. Power LED, plus and minus, uh, plus on the outside. Just little DuPont connectors. I could put like extensions. Okay, and then this guy over here. It's 
where my big monkey hands really uh, pay me a disservice. Uh, power switch and reset switch, those are not polarized. So that's good. Power switch is towards the top. Those are the two I shorted out of memory and it worked. And reset switch. Get in there. There we go. Front panel connectors, done. Next, USB 3. This is a new standard uh, for the last uh, five, six years. Plug, done. All right, now we need uh, HD audio and USB. So USB 2.0, that'll be somewhere. It's one of these two. I think it's that one there. Um, USB, probably. And the dead pin is this way. USB in, HD audio. Uh, that's usually written like front panel audio. I don't see it. It could be that guy. Nope. Hmm. Is it that guy? Nope. Okay. Well, back to the... Oh, there. It's right there. Uh, this guy. That in? Yeah, it's almost in. I really wish they made a case that was only like this big and wasn't like a couple hundred dollars. That would be really nice. Okay, next up we need to put the power supply in. Now most of our power supply cables will be doing absolutely nothing in this build. So in goes the Gigabyte power supply. Oops, it's actually upside down. So there's a fan here, and there's actually a uh, there's a dust there's a dust filter underneath there. So we're gonna put it on like this, and then also we can thread the wires pretty easily into the back there. Now the power supply typically comes with its own screws, but your case may have a set as well. Yeah, they look like this. They have the they have the little grooves on them. Hey Peekaboo, how's it going? Heard something fall in there, that's not good. Junk, how does it feel to be employed again? I'm not sure if you preferred the uh, unemployed life. I wonder if I would have made more money in my career if I were to build computers instead of fixing cars. Good question. I definitely, well, I probably wouldn't be uh, teaching building computers at college though. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> 
four to ten. I was a uh, required to stay, but I chose uh, I chose to cut my hours in half. Um, don't be too excited though. It went from uh, two days a week to one day a week, and the college I wasn't in a contract at the time anyways, so there was that. But then uh, I had to go back to two days a week because the uh, government, like the local government, wants a full reopening of everything. So I'm I'm back two days a week. And the college, I'm building a course for them right now. Like I'm building a new program. So I'm working, sorta. Okay, so usually I just thread these all down down here because I think the back side here is probably where I'm gonna store all these cables so you're not gonna be able to see this too well seems like I should have just put the cables back there from the start but oh well with enough force we'll be able to pull anything through gotta feed them through I wonder if my mom's watching me build her computer. Because she still has that i3 machine. That thing was actually okay. Like, like there's, there's nothing wrong with actually an older computer. It's just that at this point, for her to upgrade, like part to, from part to part, it just doesn't make as much sense as just replacing everything. And then she has a backup computer, you know? So she can actually use her current computer, her i3, as a home theater PC. And this one here could be the Facebook machine. And I mean, she got her money's worth out of her old PC because it's on 24-7. It's just 24-7 Facebook news network, you know? The old Zuck took all her data. She doesn't even know. Well, I told her, so she should know, but... She won't believe me. Okay, so here goes. Now let's see if we can yank all the PSU cables through. There we go. So I was hoping to store all the cables kind of like in this valley here where I think you're supposed to put a hard drive. Ain't no hard drives here. Uh, if you um, if you look at my wish list, I do have water cooling on there, but I don't think that's really something my mom wants. Um, I you know what? I actually I contacted Corsair to see if they would send me water cooling, and I told them that I would make so many videos out of the water cooling that it'd be good, be good money for them. Like it'd be you know good advertisement because they'd get like six videos out of it because I have those uh, thermal electric uh, generators there the tech tech coolers or whatever and I was going to use it for that and then install it in a PC but um, yeah they didn't bite I wonder if I can run this this is very bulky I'm wondering if I can run it underneath here there's a hard drive cage here which I could remove I don't want to remove it though because uh, I don't know, like, I don't want to store it anywhere. I just want to leave it in place. So let's see. This is much easier if you get, uh, so the smaller your build, so this is a MATX case, for example, you should get, the more, the more nice it is to get uh, modular cables, modular power supply. This is not a modular power supply because those were expensive pre-COVID and now they're insane. Alright, so does it fit here? Not really. Does it fit here? Yeah, sort of. Okay, so that'll go down like that. My 8 pin. There's the 8 pin there. Same thing, run it underneath this little bar. 
Sorry, trying to show you guys. Uh, we're going uh, NVMe. Here's the uh, parts list. None of this is sponsored, by the way, just so you know. I was going to try to get um, affiliate links so that I can at least uh, make a couple cents if you guys visit uh, Amazon, but didn't pan out. I was panicking trying to get my, um, my wife's capture card to work and I couldn't get it to work. So none of that. All right, so all these, all the rest of these cables are doing literally nothing. So I can run them up like this and just hide all the bulk under here. Mineral oil PC is pretty damn cool. Luke did one from uh, Luke from LTT. So since I don't need any of these cables, I can just close up the backside. Everything is where it needs to be. So there you go. Put my two thumb screws in there. This is a this is a pretty neat build though. I, I you know what I really enjoy building computers. This is great because like my my mom's paying for the parts. It's her it's her computer, it's not mine. So really I just get to I get to build someone else's computer with someone else's money. Just push down the IO shield, make sure everything's nice and taut. I really wish I had a motherboard with a pre-installed I.O. shield, but whatever. It is what it is. So, yeah, a little bit of a cable mess on this side, but it's not too bad. Uh, this guy here, we need a case fan plug, so that'd be this guy here. Get in there. There we go. Yeah, exactly. It's like being an uncle, right? You get to toss the ball around with someone, teach them about life, but then when they start crying, you give them back to their parents. Like, oh, uh, this is not my problem. Unfortunately, it's kind of a little bit different with uh, computers, because if you build someone a computer, uh, guaranteed, like for life, you're the you're the the responsible tech, right? They're gonna call you for any problems they have which is I mean it's okay it's my this is my parents right but if you do it for friends then they're like oh yeah they're like oh you, you know I don't think you installed the graphics card properly because I'm getting three FPS less than this website says I should be getting and it's like oh for fuck's sakes here we go Be careful when you put down this uh, the 24 pin for the motherboard because sometimes it flexes your motherboard so much. There we go. But it has to be in there properly. Tight. Ooh, looks like our 8 pins just barely going to reach the CPU. Cable managed to the max. No, that's too tight. They're really intended so that you run it behind the motherboard. But this one won't work like that. Get a good bend. There we go. Go around the RAM like that. See the, like, it doesn't look like there's not a lot of effort put into cable management here. But you don't really need it in these uh, 
these low peripheral cases like there's we got nothing in here like that's that's it like I think we're good to boot up again that's pretty good um, so we need to install Windows now You're in the Upper Peninsula. I keep hearing uh, a lot of Americans consider you guys basically Canadians in the Upper Peninsula. Again, I apologize for the jank. For those of you that weren't here, I, w I have a capture card. I don't have a USB 3 USB type C cable. I'm so sorry. Everything was ready to go except it turns out the USB cable I was going to use was actually a USB 2.0, uh, 2 uh, no 1.0, 1.1, .1, no 2.0. I needed a 3. Right. This guy in. That's HDMI is in. Yeah, no, no, we don't. You know what? Anybody who says, uh, oh, screw this, I'm going to move to Canada. Uh, you guys don't have any idea how um, difficult it is to move to Canada from another country. We, our borders are very closed. And I mean, I'm pro, I'm pro immigration, so it wouldn't it wouldn't bother me if they were a little bit more open. But I mean, it's not it's not the will of all Canadians. You know what I mean? Okay. So I got to be careful because this uh, jank station could fall over at any moment. So booting it up. Oh, I don't have a keyboard. There we go. Okay. We're going to set our boot priorities. Oh, I you guys can't see and I can't see. Perfect. Um boot priority. Let's see if it picks up when I put a USB drive in. Switch all. Boot menu. I don't know. So, looks like we have our RAM, uh, 8 gigs, running at 2666. So, we're going to have to um, uh, install, or I'm going to install Windows, and then I'm going to go put the, um, the correct uh, speed on that. We've got our 3400G running well. That's good. We got our um, yeah, all our RAM, our CPU fan, and our case fan are perfect. Everything's good. So let's see if we can save an exit. Let's see if it will boot off the USB. Get that parts list gone. 
little cursor on top of the screen. Not sure if the USB is being read. Oh, ah, Windows. <laughs> Excellent. I'm trying something new with you guys uh, today. Maybe I should. Uh, maybe I should plug in a mouse. All right, got to waste a USB 2 port, or USB 3 port, I should say, on a mouse. This case is super lightweight. I think if I was building for anybody, like, other, like if I had a customer that wanted this case, I would tell them, get something better. But since my parents, and I know it's going to sit underneath their desk and literally not move except for like vacuuming I'm, I'm cool with that all right here we go on ah much better okay English time sure uh, uh, I don't know if they want but Canadian multilingual standard next install now not everyone okay so I have a product code I need you to overt your eyes for a few seconds so I'm still here. Hold on. I'm still here. Don't worry. Don't worry. I um, I just bought this code. I'm trying something. I'm still here. Don't worry about it. I'm trying something here. Now I'm going to try not to say the code while I type it in like I typically do. since I'm a little dyslexic. Oh no. Let me just recheck. It it seems to not have worked. Give me a second. Okay, well, um, I'm going to have to put it in after. Because it's not working, so either the seller screwed me, which is possible. Uh, install Windows only. i got to format uh, this guy. New. Full size. Yep. Yep. Apply. Yeah, that's fine. Pico, is that true? Hey, how's it going, pile of stuff? We've got uh, we've got a couple of celebrities in here. Um, is that true that Walmart's closing their oil places? I actually. Um, I was looking at possibly managing one of those places much earlier in my career. 
before I had the teaching job, it was paying a lot more than I was making at the dealership, I'll tell you that. Hey look, pile of stuff, this is a this is a screen you would have never seen before. This is how we install software that runs all the programs you want to use. Not the ones that you have to go on the gargler and try to figure out why it's not working with your specific OS. Well, I mean, it's kind of for the best because um, they, they probably just couldn't find the talent they needed. Because honestly, it's super expensive when you mess up a car. It's very expensive. So, yeah, I can see how they could possibly lose money off that. That's for sure. Oh, what? It's already done? <laughs> nice. That was really quick. So that's the beauty of NVMe, right? It's like extremely fast. I'm going to take out the USB and see what happens. Sometimes it'll boot right in. This is crazy. There's like the only moving parts in this uh, computer. There's like three fans. That's it. God, I love that AMD is back in the game. I really, uh, I really didn't like the Intel uh, monopoly. Yeah, pile of stuff. I I paid ninety nine cents for my license, and I intend on getting my ninety nine cents back if I can't activate the Windows. So, there you go. Yeah, this is ridiculous. And that's also, don't forget, we have the 16 gigs of RAM. So it could have literally put my whole installation like through uh, USB 3 up into the RAM and into the, into the NVMe in no time at all. But yeah, N NVMe storage, I mean, I had a hard time, like I was this close to not putting it in, but for the, you know, 20 bucks or whatever more it was, it was definitely worth it. Are we in a boot loop or are we fixing? Are we working? It's like trying to figure out the resolution back and forth, back and forth. No, yeah, they're definitely, uh, they're, they're definitely, uh, uh, let's say, um, ones that fell off the uh, truck. Oh man, don't let me search by letter. Canaderp. Yeah, you know, I already answered this before. Uh, sure. Add a... English... English, not put English Canada, sure, next, keyboard layout, this one, uh, uh, should I put internet, yeah, whatever, I'll put internet now. I have a gigabit internet and I have a ethernet cable coming all the way down. Actually, I actually have two ethernet cables now coming all the way down to the basement here. So uh, we fully equipped. I was like, well, does this thing not have ethernet? But it does, okay, I found it. The IO shield is kind of in the way though. It's funny because Asus Asus's Prime motherboards are actually, that's their like discount uh, stuff. Next. Yeah, this is where I tell you to buzz off and not install all the spyware. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, that's true. I might need an MS account. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah. There we go. Name. Old folks. Next. No password yet. They can pick something later. Uh, don't use online speech recognition. Um, nope. No location. Nope. Nope. I also have some scripts to run after uh, that will um, remove all the uh, adware stuff. No. Uh, no. I have to remove Cortana. Yeah, pile of stuff. I agree. Like a regular SSD would have done, but the twenty to thirty dollar difference it would have been from from a terabyte SSD with a with a DRAM cache to an NVMe with a DRAM cache. To me, it was a no brainer. I had to go NVMe. Plus, it looks so much cleaner on the inside without, uh, you know, some motherboards come with the stupid orange or red uh, SATA cables. It looks silly. Kind of sad that this thing doesn't have a graphics card, but it does save like a couple hundred bucks off the build price. My, um, my editing PC has a 970 Evo uh, SSD so it is like the f one of the fastest NVMe drives you can get but at the time it was really expensive alright get this shit out of here unpin unpin alright have to add my uh, my activation but I'll do that later on Delete. Go away. Um, and now I need, I do need internet for Nanite to do its thing. Get in there. That's fine. All right. So. Watch this. I did this by purpose. Add-ons. Oh, look, hacks. Um, Nanite. So I never have to use um, Edge, not even to go get Chrome. Oh yeah, motherboard. But motherboard graphics on this thing are actually really nice too. The Vega 11 graphics, they uh, far surpass the Intel integrated, and they're even way better than the um, like like the 1030s that you get on pre-built PCs and stuff. So we're in good shape. So yeah, if you guys don't know about uh, Nanite, N I N I T E, you go and Nanite.com, and uh, you basically click all the check marks of all the things you want, and it installs all of that software. Right, one installer. You don't need to go to each individual installer. So that's good. Got my drivers here. Oops. Yeah, I installed the 7 zip as well, which is nice. So actually, it's a good idea. We're going to get to see the uh, extract speed. Uh, extract here. Very nice. Uh, there we go. X64. Whoops, whoops, whoops. That's not what I wanted. Close. Yes. What am I doing? Like an old person right now. Set up. There we go. Oh. It's basically the same thing. Yup.
I don't think many people are interested in this stream, to be honest. I'm glad there's a few hardcores. Uh, everyone? Sure. Yes. Yeah, you know I heard that, but then uh, I saw independent reviews and it is not better than Chrome. So, no. It's a lot better than people give it credit for. So, yeah, it's no longer, you know, uh, slow Ethernet Explorer. It's no longer saying Merry Christmas in, uh, you know, in July. Log in? I don't want to log in. Get out of here. Fine, I'll do it myself. All right, so audio extract here, chipset. Whoa, that was a mistake. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Let's uh. Yeah. Just have to delete all this shit after. Oh, sorry, Chemical. Um, what were your questions? Maybe I can answer them now. I'm, uh, I have a really bad setup because, like, so you guys, are, I'm looking here, the PC is there, and my laptop with your chats are, like, behind me. It's terrible. Restart later. Finish. Sorry, Chemical. If you got those questions, I got your answers. Well, I'm, I can try at least. I don't not an expert. Done. Okay, next. There we go. In the folder. Oh my um so I'm I'm well. Everyone here is staying healthy, which is nice. Um my business I haven't worked on it for a while because I am a uh, terrible person. Also, my YouTube channel's been a uh, little bit blowing up, so I've been focusing on making content for that. So I've, I do have some, uh, I do have some some more content on the way. So there's that. Uh, plus, I mean, my my business is highly um, tied into yuck, Radeon software. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Install. So yeah, my um, my business is highly tied into uh, the automotive industry, which has taken a big hit during this uh, pandemic. So oh no, no, I I just I'm just terrible at reading chat. I really wish it should like it should pop up on the side of uh, of the thing, but yeah, fine. Do a Windows update instead. There. Extract to there. Get the land drivers. Probably won't be able to do land drivers. I don't know. You know what? I really don't know if any of this is necessary because Windows tends to install the correct drivers on on their own. I don't think you really need to install drivers anymore, but just in case ASUS has something weird up their sleeve. Might as well. It's kind of sad that this thing doesn't have a side case window thing. Yeah, that's true, Chemical. You're uh, you're right about that. Increase visibility. I need a monitor like right here in front of me. Uh, yay! Install the Realtek driver. Good. I don't know if I need Raid Expert, but whatever. Do that. And then uh, we're going to run some benchmarks. We're going to restart the PC. We're going to run some benchmarks and see, see what kind of greatness we have. I don't know how it's going to do on Cinebench, but we're going to find out together. 
Yuck, I gotta go remove all this stuff. I think we're good. Let's check the task manager. More details. Performance. Oh. Yeah, okay. That's good. Well, I think we're good. So performance here, let's check uh, change graph to logical processors. So there we go, we got all our eight cores here. We got our SSD, got our removable drive, Ethernet, and our GPU with temperatures. Very nice. I like it. Okay, let's restart the computer. Actually, let's see if I can install Cinebench. And if we can install Cinebench, then we're going to do that. And then we're going to run Cinebench. Going to check the benchmarks. Fifty percent memory usage. That's actually not that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accept. Okay. So yeah, we're going to restart. We're going to restart this. I even have stats. So um, my brother-in-law has a. Um, uh, R5 2600 so we're gonna see if the 3400 G is as fast or faster or slower than a 2600 and this PC is gonna be a little sluggish for a little bit too because the Windows is doing its updates which is silly because I just downloaded the image yesterday from window from Microsoft website so you know you think it would be the most up-to-date but it's not. Uh, no, it's just a product key. 48 gigs of RAM, chemical, Jesus. That's a lot of RAM. Alright, we're back in Windows, that took forever. Um, let's see, go over here. USB, add-ons. We're going to copy Cinebench here, just because it's going to be a lot uh, a lot simpler. Oh, you see? You see this the difference between the NVMe flash and the flash on the USB? See all these little files here? They're bogging down the, the, the drive, and the big files, they go a lot faster. See? Look at that. The NVMe won't do that. Look at that, look at that, it just falls on its face. Okay, so here we go, Cinebench. You can definitely tell it's a, uh, oh yeah, that's fine, let's go away. All right, so let's see what we got here, except, all right, and then file, advanced benchmark, so we're going to run the benchmark here and here we go. So there's our CPU pinned at 100%. There's the eight logical cores doing their job. Yeah, it's very likely the motherboard chemical when uh, when you have a, uh, a like one dead stick, it's typically the the slot doesn't work. Hey George, thanks for contributing. Uh, you know what? I appreciate the lurkers too. So I appreciate you. I'm gonna have to have a chat with my. Uh, my eBay seller for my product key. So we're turboed up to uh, four gigahertz all core. We could go up a little higher if we if we manually overclock, but that's that's about what we're expecting. The fan is ramped up like crazy now, but not overheating. We're only using four and a half gigs of our sixteen. 
Oh, it doesn't show 16 gigs because uh, some of it's being used by the graphics card. So we only have 14 usable. Uh, startup processes? Don't know. Turn off OneDrive. Logitech Download Assistant. Nope, turn that off. There we go. Done. Almost there. So I have the score for my CPU as well. So we'll see here. So my 8086K scored 1438. What will this score? Yeah, I just turned it off, uh, DJ. Uh, the 2600 scored a 1282, so we're looking for a better than 1282. What do we got? Wait, seriously? We got a 1901. We blew the 6 core 12 thread Ryzen 5 out of the water and my oh wait my 8086k got blown out of the water too I don't think it's the same release hmm because let's see here uh, the 7700 is a little bit faster and yeah there's oh AMD Ryzen 7 yeah the Ryzen 7 would be faster so, so I mean it's a decent it's a decent chip works just fine. I have to enter the product key. I think it's in here. Yeah. Alright. So that's that. I'm going to have to be doing a bunch of system updates and I'm going to have to do a bunch of uh, testing and I have to install a little bit more software that the uh, old folks want on their computer. But I think for now we're pretty much done. So this is the portion of the video, or the live stream, where you can actually ask me questions. And whatever questions you have, I will answer if at all possible. Have a good night, Ryan. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I only have uh, in the BIOS here, we only have uh, one thing in boot prior. Oh shit, we need to go set the, uh, we need to go set the RAM to the right uh, settings. And then I have to leave this connected overnight for it to uh, actually do the system updates. I hate the fact that, that a brand new ISO still needs to be updated. Need to get into the BIOS here. There we go. Uh, okay, so we need to change the RAM. Oh boy, I can't read. Let's see, advanced mode. advanced um, let's see overclocking yeah not not right now soon though uh, Northbridge onboard device APM PCI network stack where's the memory frequency should be able to get um, what is this 3200 Oh, the DOCP. That's what I wanted. There we go. So that should tighten up the timings. Um, what you? Exit. Save changes. And reset. Yep. 
Um, if you check my uh, battery, um, like the how to charge lithium ion batteries, I'm up to I think 150,000 views on it, which is insane because I've only had the max I've had was like 65,000 views. Yeah, please run Cinebench. I'm actually going to run it again now that we have our RAM at a higher speed. Um, memory. Does it say the speed? Yeah, there we go. Look at that. 3200. I'm going to run Cinebench again. It should have remembered our last score. <laughs> they will know. But yeah, I should install folding at home. All right, uh, CPU. Is it gonna run? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we got a 1901 on here. And now we'll see with the faster RAM and the tighter timings if uh, if our um, score is gonna increase. Now it's not gonna go up to 2,000, I don't think. But I mean, you never know. Plus, it's like it's free performance because the the RAM was specifically like designed to hit those speeds. Yeah, I'm not BWs. I don't think I'm going to overclock it. I think when the uh, system gets tired in uh, you know four or five years, then I'll go in and overclock it a little bit. But this is a B450 motherboard. It could have got them an an A320 or whatever motherboard, or was it 430? Um, but the B450 will actually be able to use the Zen 3 architecture. So when the new CPUs come out next year, and then they'll be built for another year and a half or two years, um, when it comes time to upgrade, I may just buy them one on a used, you know, on the used market, and pop it into this motherboard, and it'll be refreshed. It's gonna be crazy. Thank you, DJ Rob William. It's been uh, quite the roller coaster ride, actually, watching the numbers go up and down. Like, I've been, um, I peaked at uh, 32,000 views for a 48 hour period. Well, thanks, DJ. It's really appreciated. I, um, I actually got into an argument. Well, so, like, someone left a really negative comment, and I corrected him. And he disagreed, but after like ba a, f a couple back and forths, he's like, "Hey, thanks for chatting with with me. Usually, YouTubers don't don't read the comments." And I'm like, "Man, are you kidding? Like, I love reading the comments." I'll tell you that fan, like the uh, the CPU cooler, is just giving her. This poor thing is eating the poop so let's see from 1901 what are we gonna get now 1961 so we went up 60 points with just changing one setting in the BIOS crazy so we're good Cinebench is done now we just need to let this thing uh, chooch overnight and then we'll be good to go. My parents will be nice and happy. Let's go, uh, geez, recycle bin tools, empty that ish. There we go. And that's it. So we're, we're done. Just need to deep in, uh, edge off the browser. And there we go. So yeah, if there's uh, no more questions, I think I'm going to end the stream now. I want to uh, thank you all for coming by and dealing with this jank. Um, I did have the capture card. Here's here's a proof. There, there's the capture card. I just didn't have a USB-C that terminated in a uh, USB-3 connection. So if you look at this, this USB-C, but here, if you look in there, only four wires. So this end is USB 2.0 Type A, and this is USB C. So 
the capture card needs a USB 3.0 type A to USB C. But yeah, have a good night everyone and uh, once again, thanks for watching.